So hello guys, hope you are doing good. Welcome to another grand interesting video on your BMS channel. Okay. So basically in this video, we are going to understand the detailed process flow logic, which is required in order to execute the logic, which we have seen in our part one. Okay. So if you haven't watched part one, I would request you to, you know, watch part one so that you could understand, you know, the uh, crust of the logic and what was the reason for this logic and what are the additional things we have already done before we come to the process flow and then you're ready with the part two i hope you have watched part one if you're watching this part two okay so great so if you haven't liked the video please do like this share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to our be Able channel where you will be getting a diverse area of knowledge under one shelter so that is all on be aware channel right so thank you for staying with us and i hope you will be with us till end of this video okay so now we are going to understand the logic of how is this being controlled over these three you know merging conveyors in the last video we already saw that we have given a priority you know to the cylinders which will be moving out from here straight away ahead right and then we are going to play a reservation logic for these three merging conveyors so if you could see we have three domains of inputs and these three inputs are from three merging conveyors right so that is what is the starting point for our process flow so if you see in this what is going to happen whichever conveyor is going to have a higher number of parts on that then those are given a priority to get released out of the flow okay so that is how this logic works and the controlling parameter is this. This slot will be acting as a reservation area. You know, you can change the quantity to two and three depending on your requirement. Currently, we are checking for only one seat available. And for that, we have here the, you know, the process flow created similar to what we created here. So now let us understand. What we have done is we have created arrival source here with a quantity of one. Okay, and what we do is whenever our, that token is available, we push to that list so that another part can check that or pull that. So what happens is, you know, we have only one reservation available. And whenever a trigger is initiated, that one ticket of reservation is given to any one of the box. And if that box is out of the system, then only that seat is available. And then that seat can be taken by any of the other part available on these three merging conveyor. So this is how this merging logic works. So if you want to create this, create an interval source, give a quantity of one, then you need to push the token value to the list. And the list we have connected to is this, that is list one. Okay, so this is the internal list. And if you see this list two, it is the item list, which we saw in the part one, where we push the parts, you know, whenever they come to the merging conveyors, right? Now let us see what is happening in these three domains. So if you see, we have on induction arrival. So we have DP2, we have DP3, and we have DP4. Now I'll just reset this model for the time being. So if you see, we have a DP2 here, we have a DP3 here, and we have DP4 here. So what do we do whenever part is going to arrive on this, we are going to label it as item, and we're going to assigning that as item assigned, right? So the token will get the item details. We're setting the priorities here. Priority is five, here priority is three, here priority is two, okay? So the highest priority has been given to this merging conveyor because it is the top and it will not get parts available always because what will happen is these two conveyors will be completely, you know, just they will push the parts onto the main conveyor and this conveyor will not have a part to get pushed whereas it will always be full. So that is the reason we are giving priority from top to bottom. So first, that is two, three, and four first priority is all given to you know this conveyor that is the straight main conveyor now what do we do whenever a part comes in we are going to tell that part to get stopped okay so we stop the item and then what we do here is a tricky and more greatly understanding part right so if you see here what i'm doing now is basically i am checking what is the you know content of my what we say, uh, conveyors, okay? So what I say that if my parts available on my conveyor seven are more than these two conveyors, 
for that it, the code is written here in this way you can understand that right so what we do is we check that my seventh conveyor has the highest capacity than these two conveyors then i am going to put one label on the token that is type which is equal to two okay then similarly i'm going to do it for token dot type equal to three and token dot type equal to four if this is having highest content i will have a type three if this is having highest content i will have a type four right now if you see my token is having a new label named as type okay we already have a token with label as priority which is again with a value now what happens is for example, you know, uh, what is going to happen now, we are going to have two labels, one is type and one other is priority, okay? So what is going to happen is we are going to prioritize things. So whenever a type is equal to priority, okay, that part we are going to move out. Like for example, say I have priority two, three, four parts available in this. And what I got is that the token, the type, you know the type which i was uh, found was uh, say four so i'm going to say that my type is you know four and my priority is four then i have a part which has to go like basically my type that is the requirement is matching the part availability then it has to go down if it is not we'll go on checking 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 you know and what is going to happen one time is that the type is going to be equal to priority because what is going to happen is say for example i have all these three parts right and my type is two because i have a part more available on this conveyor so all these three tokens will have two 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 but what is going to happen at this side is the priority which is two which is equal to type two that is my part on this conveyor will only be allowed to go down and it will go in the delay it will again assign the types it will come down so this is this is a great crux you know this is a you know the heart of the logic now what happens you know the moment we are going to have we get the part which has to be on a main conveyor based on the logic it will come down and it will you know pull the item from the list now what is going to pull right it is basically going to pull priority equal to pull order type. You know, this is a tool. What we're going to do is we are basically going to pull in the item matching with the priority. Okay. So the type equal to priority. Means we are going to pull the same part from the list which has to be pushed out. Then in the decide, what we're going to do is we are going to have a token dot type. So if we are going to have a token dot type as you know one, it is straight away going to go down we have two so if you remember we have only three types that is two three and four so whenever it is two it will go here three it will come here four it will come here right now what we have done we have pulled the item from the list then we are going to pull from the list what the logic which we created here reservation thing reservation thing will start here you know you are going to pull from the list that is one part the moment we are going to pull, the token is not available now to be pulled you know if we have another parts coming in here they will be waiting here so we'll have one part, we will pull that down, right? And then in resume, I have done now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resume that item, that particular item, you know, which I want to move ahead will be resumed. And the moment this, you know, uh, part is going to, uh, what we're going to do is uncover. So if this part is going to uncover, so basically this is PE3, that is for, you know, if you see that is for four, that is here, okay, PE3. So whenever an item is going to cover this, right? When it is going to cover this, we are matching that same item. And then once it get covers, the token is free to be released. So now, now the moment it passes this P, it is leaving its reservation. And the seat is available for another parts to pull, then again push, pull, and again the push. The top logic is used for identifying which parts to be moved on the main conveyor. The bottom thing is used to you know check my availability of the seats now to find you on this logic what you can do is this p uncover what you have made you can make this based on this uh what is decision part so what you can say is on decision point the moment it is on continue this code will be more faster and you know you will be having this parts good nothing you have to do you just need to go you know come in here dp1 and you on continue and what you need to do is put this as item and you need to what do is return match this 
it is that simple so that's how it works you know and if you see this now if i run this so this will be more faster right because what this item these two merging conveyor item has to be done as per the old logic because they have to go to this photo i then only they will release their seeds whereas for this logic the moment it leaves this photo uh, decision point it is going to make the seat reservation available for other parts so this basically makes the system faster you can try that out you can also change this quantity to two you know and check if this conveyor you want to use it more efficiently and this is how you know the logic has been created in order to you know make the merging based on the conveyors part quantum capacity right and uh, this logic i uh, hope will help you a lot you know to replicate your real case systems of your plant the merging logic right and uh, this logic uh, uh, and the from the standpoint of you know uh, the process excellence or the efficiency is also great if you are working with a plc thing this would be a great logic where you need to check the content and ideally everyone do like that only so you for replicating this real case into your simulation environment this is how the logic you can create and apply so let me know in the comment section how was this video for you hope you would have liked this video thanks for staying with us till the end of this video and please guys do not forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel right so that what motivates us for bringing you new content and do not forget to visit our website bhchannel.com so this is the part of the merging conveyor logic let me know in the comment section if you have any queries you can reach us out from the email id or from our website so that's all for today and you know stay safe stay simulating so welcome to our website beaverchannel.com and you can see that we have lot of educational content just for you so the specialized content we have is you know discrete event simulation support you know then we provide you industrial engineering training then we have lectures for you and then we have blogs which are literally going to groom your you know skill sets and your knowledge then we have a very important aspect of our life that is health awareness related stuffs on your beaver channel okay so here is is our booking online appointment tab so in the home you will get the you know tab where you can book online appointments for you know if you want you know the flexim simulation training you can book it here if you want you know uh, the support related to simulation projects that might be industrial simulation projects then you can book and take an appointment from here we will be discussing on that into this you know then if you want a support related to creation of 3ds model files which you can import in your simulation you know for better visualization we have that in here you can book the appointments from here you know if there are any simulation project support for engineering students you know for their educational purpose for their educational projects if you there need support on then we are there to support you you can book your appointment from here and we can have a thorough detailed discussions and then we can take ahead the plan of how it has to be done then if you want the customized simulation model for your industry simulation projects for your you know engineering projects we can provide you customized simulation modules so you know to know this in detail book appointments now you know there are very limited slots available and it's the fastest thing you need to do is book online appointments